All right. <clears throat> Shit. Oh, sorry for the bad words. I promise myself I will not start the video with all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm learning from my mistakes. All right. <clears throat> there is double sound. Shit. Oh, sorry for the bad words. I promise myself I will not start the video oh, with all right. Oh, probably from your speaker. <laughs> okay. Supposedly, I should not be disturbed. Should not be disturbed anymore. Okay. How are you, Cleo, today? I'm good. <laughs> Excited to be <clears throat> to be sharing some uh, some new stuff to uh, to the software development community. Yeah. Uh... I'll, I'm excited to also like uh, um, continue with what we've learned from the from the first uh, session because this is like a, a progressive a progressive uh, learning learning path. So yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it was just three hours. Becoming a software yes. developer will require thousands of hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has to be incremental. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm not sure if the sound is good. Is there someone in the chat that can say something to us? Guys, can you say hello in the chat? Hello, let us know if you're like tuning in and probably let us know where you're from. So that, yeah, well, it's interesting to know every, where everyone is from. Yeah, that would be great to know if everything is uh, set on your side, guys. Uh, let me see. I can check. Where are you? Oh, yeah. oh hello. Audio is good from Jose Perido. Thank you, Jose, for letting us know. Thank you, Shai. Hello, Jose. Hello, hello Shaira. Hello, Richmond. Good. All right. So now we know that some people are alive on Facebook. On Facebook. Hello, Hello Felin and Danish. Yeah, <laughs> it's like we're doing shout outs here. <laughs> we are here to say hello first. That's networking, the first thing. <laughs> you already know our name. Me, I'm Baba. <laughs> On the other side, it's Cleo. <laughs> Everything good? Hi. Yes? Are you, are you all happy, guys, to be learning some Node.js development? Mm -hmm. Course number two. Um, so I'm trying to figure out. So that's on Facebook. We got everything sorted out on Facebook. Is there anyone from YouTube that 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 can say something on the chat to to just see if uh, if it's working? And then after you put a thumb, thumbs up, subscribe, the bell, and everything like that. But that is after <laughs> for now, just on the chat, uh, just to see if it work if it's working. Um, that would be nice, but let's see. I can I can see if if if, if we have some viewers on YouTube. We see that uh, all of you guys are coming from Facebook. Um, viewers, viewers, one. One on, on YouTube, and I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's not true, because now we have there, we have many people there, but it's mainly coming from Facebook, on Twitch, and on YouTube, we don't have comments. So maybe I should, uh, I should cheat and... Okay. Well, audio is good. Ah, yes. Thank you, Shaira, for YouTube. Okay. So if we are good on Facebook, on YouTube, this week we innovated because we are now live also on Twitch. <laughs> so, oh, Sensei Dale, nice to see you again. <laughs> I think I know this guy. Um... So yeah, we are also on Twitch. So last week there was a hiccup in the technical setup and um, I lost my Twitch account for some reason. So now we are back on Twitch, StarTech Academy. So 
let's uh, get started. Um, so, who is Cleo? Cleo, full stack developer, introduce yourself just for those that don't know you. In case the few viewers for now don't know mm -hmm. you, I think most of them. Do you know Feline? Do you know Jose? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have them uh, watching us oh, uh, for joining us tonight uh, for learning uh, backend uh, development. So yeah. All right. So introduce yourself. So Cleo, who are you? What do you do? What do you like? Uh, hi everyone. So my name is Cleo. Uh, I'm I'm a developer at Start Tech Up. I'm mostly working with the javascript technologies and sometimes on python but i i really love javascript and so that is uh, also one of the motivations for this course is to build in uh, build an application using javascript from from ground up that means from from the back end to front end and so yeah uh, i i love technology i think that's it <laughs> All right, thank you. So I am Baptiste Baba in short, uh, and I created Startic Up, a software development agency in Cebu City uh, seven years ago. I'm a software engineer, and um, and yeah, we've been creating a, a great group of uh, tech enthusiast developers on many different technologies, and we thought that it would be time for sharing all our knowledge. So. So we are tackling course number one that we did last week was for Node.js mm -hmm. course number one. And now we are on Node.js course number two. And we will move forward with many different, uh, more advanced mm -hmm. and more uh, complex things. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's about me. Um, nothing else. So maybe I should get started uh, to give you again uh, a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a background about the academy. So, oui. so the academy, um, the Startech Up Academy, it's all about sharing knowledge between all of us guys. Uh, many different technologies um, will need us to be um, always learning new programming language, new frameworks, new stacks. So the academy is a uh, um, a digital way of all connected with each other and all making sure that we do uh, we do our part and we we get our hands dirty for making sure that we acquire the, the knowledge. The first thing you need to check is uh, go on GitHub and we have the Startec Up Academy on GitHub. The Startec Up Academy on GitHub. Um, if after you can join us, uh, I will add you as students, so you can we can also interact with your own code and we can participate, mm -hmm. etc. So have a look at uh, send us your um, your GitHub accounts and we will add you as students or eventually mentor, because the goal is to be sorry I did I did miss to pull out. Uh, my first uh, slides of last week. Um, maybe it was just this one already? No, it was this one. So the goal is uh, really to be learning all these different great technology. Let me pull that one out. Uh, where is that? Uh, is it, was it that slide? I forgot. Mm, I think it's, it's yeah, with the... It was this yeah. slide. So that's basically all the technical map. That's all the knowledge that we really, really frequently use uh, within our uh, within our company. In terms of backend, Node, Python, Laravel, all these great frameworks are competing with each other to um, give us really great tools to develop web development. Um, server and databases, you know all of these guys. In front end, we will tackle next week React JS. Uh, but we'll also do courses about Angular, Vue.js, and many more. Mobile development, we have our mobile development team also that specializes in uh, Android, iOS. So we will be sharing with you also these great technologies. We can also do some courses about uh, Firebase and more. What is that noise? Okay, sorry. And um, 
And the, so the purpose is really to provide you this online content for you to be able to um, get your hands in any of these technologies. All right. So that's our GitHub. The, the, the GitHub is the startechup.org and we will add you. So if you can make sure that you uh, share with us, there are two ways really of sharing and discussing with us. You go on Discord and you add yourself. You create an account if you don't have any and supposedly under the video, you should have our Discord URL. You, you will get all the channels there course one, course two, etc. So you can all discuss with each other what you've done about the course, what you've done about the technology, etc. So you see, and there will be also the topic channels, which will be Node.js, React.js, Vue.js, and many, many, many more. So you can really, based on the channel, uh, interact with many, many different developers from different communities. You can go also on Facebook and look for the Startup Up Academy. Uh, please add yourself, and that is a private group where you can also communicate with each other. Uh, you will be able to share knowledge, um, ask questions. So two ways of sharing your GitHub with us. Um, and we will add you as students. So we can pull out uh, your, your code uh, of the course that you, you're doing. That is about the Startup Up Academy. That's really the purpose. Now, the Startup Cup Academy has been focusing on developing one application that would be constant, constantly use, uh, used uh, throughout all the different courses, which is Globdrop. Globdrop is an application that is meant to be connected to, sorry, that is meant to be connecting travelers with NGOs, local charities. The way, the way we see this application is that literally this application is a bit like a trip advisor of organizations. You can uh, geolocate them. You can know what, uh, what charity is in your neighborhood. You can know what charity when you're traveling abroad, let's say in Vietnam. You can know uh, what orphanage is there, what animal, uh, animal shelter is there. And you can, you can interact with these guys. So it's re really like a, a, web, uh, um, a web platform that uh, is similar to TripAdvisor. The beauty of this project is that very easily we will be able to create mobile applications that will be consuming the data coming from our APIs and, and, and many more also. We can use uh, a lot of different technologies also based on these applications. <laughs> So Globdrop does that, uh, connects organizations to users. And that's about it. Uh, if you want to really know more about um, what Globdrop is meant to be, go on the course number one. You can, uh, you can have a really great understanding uh, about the foundation of, of that project already. Uh, but... Just by following the stream, I'm sure you will be able to pick up the, 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 the fundamentals of that project. So that's about it for me. Uh, maybe, Cleo, that can be your turn. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. OK. So uh, my, can you see my screen? Is my screen already? All done. I need up. Done. And there is the chat also <laughs> over your head. So we see your slides and the chat. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, let's let's get started for tonight. So hello everyone, how's it going for everyone? We are now on our stream too, and again, this is backend development uh, using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. So this is a part of a series where we learn uh, back backend uh, we, where we learn uh, full stack web development with the MERN stack. So MERN stack, as we all know, uh, stands for MongoDB, Express, ReactJS, and Node. So in this part, we are still on the M, E, and N part. But later on, when we already discussed uh, the basics of, of the, the backend web development, then we can proceed with the front end side. And so for those who missed a stream one, uh, you can always review the first uh, F Facebook Live or YouTube video and, and, and yeah, you can you can always review that and, and follow along. And also uh, I'd like to share to you this uh, repo here. 
So uh, in order for you to follow along while we're having the live stream, you can check the technical technical requirements and, and prerequisites here. So what are the things that you need to install in your machine as well as all of the other instructions. So yeah, so the technical requirements and prerequisites is found in here. So just a recap from the from Sesh one. So from Sesh one, we're able to initialize our node application. We're also able to um, create a web server using Node.js and Express. And instead of, uh, instead of using a local uh, database from the same machine, we're also able to initialize a cloud-hosted database with MongoDB Atlas. And we're also able to connect our cloud-hosted database with a graphical user interface for uh, MongoDB, which is Robot3T. And uh, we were able to um, identify what project we will be making because uh, we will really never know if we will really never learn if we don't make a real world application. So we should, we need to get our hands dirty, and that's uh, we will throughout the session we will be uh, creating Globe Drop uh, application just uh, introduced by by Batis a while a while ago, and. Uh, 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 second to the last is uh, we were able to create the API layer. That means the basic CRUD create, retrieve, update, delete functions for the organization entity. So we were able to define models, the controller, and the routes. And lastly, we tested our API routes with Postman. And so uh, I think I do remember last time I gave you guys a homework. So. <laughs> um, so uh, I hope that you're able to do your homework. So your homework was to create the API layer for the user entity this time, because uh, from the technical specifications that we have, we will have two kinds of entities, which is the user and the organization. So we already made uh, the, the API layer for the organization. Now for for your application side, for your like practical, practical thing, you need to do the, the user's part. So I hope every uh most of you have done your homework so let let me know in the comments if someone did the homework or not <laughs> i i did mm. oh very good students <laughs> okay so yeah so let's carry on so i'm also a good student that's why i also did my homework <laughs> so um let's let's go back to our our technical specifications so in here these are the the fields that we want to be implemented in our our user model and so let me discuss uh the implementation of the homework so like with what we did on the previous session we created the api layer by first identify uh first um specifying uh the model so we have here our user schema we have this um we have these uh, fields here. We have the username, email, uh, password, and language, as well as the country. And in our specifications, it's here that we have three kinds of users. We have the super admin, the NGO admin, and the user ad, uh, the the user the the typical the, the normal user. And so in here, I was I I created a new field that will contain the user type. And so the implementation here is to have an enum. Uh, enum is a is a is um, enum means um, according. Uh, let's go to the Mongo schema types so that we will know. So Mongo schema types. Hmm. Okay. So schema types. So we have. Oh, here. So enum is a is an array. It creates an enum a validator. Uh, if the value is being set is not within this array, then the validation will fail. That means you have a limited choice of inputs. Your inputs, your values for the user type should be within these three choices here. If not, then it will throw an error. So that that's what enums are for. And we also set a default value here. Uh, we, uh, in case the user didn't, um, in case we didn't specify what is the user type, then it will automatically assign it to the value of the user. And so, um, 
after the model is I also specified the services. So these are the base model methods that we have. We have the create, the find, find all, find one, find one and update, and then delete one. So from here, we are we will uh, we're able to also um, create our user controller. So in here, we we call in the service, uh, which is here, and then from from here we're able to extend more the logic from our services and this is the the api functions that we will have so here we are calling the user service that find which is basically the find function here in our services so it's basically the same with what we did on the first uh, uh first stream so we have here get users by type it's this it's basically the same as uh, service function it's just that i'm defi uh, i'm defining here a certain filter it's 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 by user type and also here it's by id and again what's why what's the reason why our 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 implementation is having a service and having a controller wherein most people um most most of the time they implemented it everything in a single controller uh, we're doing this so that we can repeatedly call this base model methods here from the services uh, folder. So, for example, here in the register, we're actually using two kinds, two two logics, two two base mo uh, base model methods here, which is the user user service find one and at the same time the create. Why? Because we're actually trying to make sure that we're not having duplicates when we try to register a certain user. So. So we need to to find in our database if the if the user already exists. If not, then it will create. If if the user already exists, it will throw an error. It will throw a message that says uh, user with this email already exists. So yeah, and we also have the update user and the delete user. And finally, uh, we created the routes for that in here. So we we're able to uh, in my case i implemented another i called in another instance of the ex, uh, another Finally, express uh, um, we created the uh, module for import that here in and here. then i called in the express so router we we able to imported also the controller file for our for our api functions here and then i i def, uh, defined the the path for the api url and called in the API function to be executed for this specific path. And lastly, call this in our server JS file. So here we have the user and we 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 called in the user route and uh, apply the middleware by 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 calling app.use and putting in the user the user variable which contains the user route. So Let's try if this uh, implementation works. So let me connect first to my robot 3T here. So this is the, the, the connection we have last time. So I'll connect to my robot uh, to my MongoDB Atlas. So let me just delete this collection first here. So let's see what's inside my user. So I currently have three users here. What I will do is I will insert a new user. So I will call on my postman. And I need to make sure that my app is running. So I need to invoke npm start. OK, and I have to go back to my postman. And I will invoke a post request. And I will say local host 3000 because that is where our app is running on port 3000. And I'll go back to my routes to see where is my insert uh, insert logic. So here, user controller register, it's actually on post and slash user. So I will go to the body in order for us to uh, to give the body uh, the request body parameter. So here I'll click raw and of json type so i will 
refer to what are the what are the fields in my model so i will create an object and in this case uh I have to make sure that this is wrapped on double quotes. Okay. And then I will have to delete this one because this is a type string, not an object. So I have to make sure also that whatever is my my value here is wrapped also with a wrap also with double quotes. Okay, so I'll just type in username, user, name is user, test user. Then the email will be testuser at user.com. And then the password will be password123. Then the language will be English. Country will be Philippines. And the user type will be, let's say, it's an NGO underscore admin. Okay, let's try if this works. So it says here, uh, user inserted. Let's check in our in our database if this user was really inserted. So I'll have to refresh, and I'll have to double click on the collection. And as you can see here, I was able to create a new user with the with the data that I have. So as uh, as I mentioned, it, the enums are the validators. So let's try inserting a user. Uh, let's try to to see if our if our data validation of like having an existing user really works. So I'll try to send this again. And as you can see, we can have your user with this email already exists. Now let's try if our enum validator is working. So I'll type here person and i'll just change the email one two three send this and as you can see it's it's loading here because we are having an error in our in our code it says here that validation error user type person is not valid enum for the for the path user type so as you can see here it will really uh it will really prompt you if your if your value for the user type field is not within this three choices here so let me let me correct that so i'll just put here what's the for the super admin again oh super underscore admin so super underscore admin then i'm going to restart my app and start and i will execute this uh, api again and you can as you can see user inserted let's check in our robo 3t and we have a new user here of user super admin. So yeah, that's the whole. That's for the homework. I hope that uh, you're also able to implement the API layer for the user user entity. And so the next thing that we will do is to add um, two two fields. It's the created at and the updated at. So why is it important for us to have these two fields? Because these fields are actually like um. It, it acts like sort of a metadata for your model. So whenever a record is being created, it will put a timestamp. And whenever a, uh, a record is being updated or there's some modifications in the fields, uh, the values in the fields, then it will also update the the the, the date where when it is when it when, when the modifications are made. So this is this is uh, uh, helpful when you're trying to debug like uh, I was uh, if if you're trying to identify when was the last time this record was actually uh, when was this record la uh, last modified or, or when is it created so let's let's try to implement that first uh, here in the in the user uh, user model so i'm going to create i'm going to put a a field called created at and so the type will be of date. And I'm going to put a default value, which is default uh, 
default value will be date dot now. Okay, and uh, the same thing for the updated at. It's just that we will have a different uh, key name field name here. Updated at. So okay. So you may be wondering what's this version key is equal to false. So let's go here. Um, I will go to my organization to see the values in here. Do you see this V underscore zero here? This is actually like uh, the, when you when you try to insert a record uh, in Mongoose, it actually gives you a version version number and it's this. So in our user, we have the version key false. That's why the last two, two records that we have actually doesn't have this, this field here. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the use of this version key so that it, you won't have extra fields there that are not really, not really relevant. And so now that we have added these two, uh, two additional fields here, let's try to, let's try to see if if this will be appended once we created new uh, new records, so I'll try to create another user again. I'll just <laughs> put there the email. That's different. So I'm just gonna say ngo admin because uh, the 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 basis for our duplicates is just the email. But you can extend that if you want. Like the email or the username must be really unique then you can also do that. But in my implementation, I just use the email as the defining factor. So uh, I'll try to send this one. And user inserted. Let's see if we have the created at and the updated at field on our on our uh, user, user data. So as you can see here, we have eight fields. But then for the new record that we have, we already have uh, 10 fields, which is the created at and upda updated at. And we have here uh, the, the date in UTC format. So uh, you may be wondering, yeah, that, that's really important. But then how about the updated at? How will you do, how will you do the, the changing of the timestamp once you, you already update the record? So we will discuss that uh, later on because uh, we will be carrying that with another feature, which we will discuss also. So uh set your mind for now for the updated at and let's proceed so um as you can see here in our records there's really something wrong with our password what do you think is the is the weird thing about our password any guess in the comments let's let's try to see Um, so should we okay. wait for the? I uh, no, no. The I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to make this as interactive as possible. So yeah. Actually, um, for the next streams, maybe what we could do is that uh, if someone mm -hmm. gives a right answer, we can send a Start the Cup uh, Academy T-shirt. Oh, like swags. That's nice. Oh, nice from Richmond Lafranco. Not encrypted. Very good. Yes. Uh, Ding. We are <laughs> no nice. t-shirt yet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no t-shirt. No t-shirt. No swags yet. <laughs> yeah, but we can give incentives uh, later on. So yeah, thank you so much for answering. Uh, yes, you're correct. Not encrypted. So we're saving the password as is, and this can really be uh, 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 this could really pose a security threat. So what we can do is we need to encrypt our password. And how, how, should, how will we do that? We can do that by using a library called bcrypt. So what is bcrypt? So bcrypt is a library that will help you hash your passwords. So um, in order for us, uh, so here, uh, if you try to look in the, in the NPM, uh, NPM library, then you can see how it's been used, how you will install it. And and yeah, so first let's install it and let's install bcrypt. npm install, what's that, bcrypt. Actually, I will use the other one, not this, the, I will use the bcrypt.js.
Yeah, because it has more weekly downloads. <laughs> so I'm going to install that. Decrypt JS dash dash save. So always uh, have the, the dash dash save uh, flag. So now that we have uh, our, let's check in our package at JSON. Yes, it is installed. Let's go back to our user model. Uh, now we have bcrypt installed. Let's call that in our user model. Let's say const, then I'm going to say bcrypt is equal to require. Can you, BCRIP. Cleo, uh, no, on yes. your terminal, just um, show the, the how you did because uh, the zoom of your desktop didn't npm install. Yeah, bcrypt dash dash save. That's what I did uh, it as a library. Yes, because yeah, because I'm zooming in on your screen and I, we could not, you were too fast. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> just let me know if, if you want to highlight something. So yeah, um, this is this is how we import a library uh, and we're calling bcrypt now. So the next thing that we have to do is actually before we save we, before we save the the the, the user password, we have to do some operations. So there's actually um, there is a middleware that you can that you can use in order to perform before operations um, before some base base model methods. So for example, if you want to save something, then you can do uh, before operations before the saving. So that's called free. Uh, let's open. Um, let's open the mongoose mongoose JS uh, free. So these are these are actually called hooks. So free in here. So free middleware functions are executed one after another when each middleware calls next. So in this case, in the example um, here before. Before uh, the the app actually it performs the the operation save, then it do it performs the the code block here. Um, because as you all know, um, Express is actually Express is um, um, is a web fr framework that is just essentially a series of middleware function calls. And so here uh, we we will be using a middleware in order to do the password hashing. So the schema name, then free, and then the first first uh, parameter is actually the method, and then the next uh, the next of is the callback function of what what stuff you will do before the saving thing. So you can also do some some uh, other other let's say other methods aside from save like like here so you can always check the documentation for that so let's do that um i'm gonna i'm gonna first uh, say user schema because that's the name of our schema and i'm gonna say pre and then the first uh first parameter is save and then the next would be a a callback function i'm gonna use a sync in here because i want i want for this function to execute, uh, wait until this function is actually executed before the next uh, the next method or the next uh, function call. So next, and then the, it will have a parameter of next. I will explain next uh, in a while. So um, next is actually next is uh, used to indicate the next code block that we will be we will be executed. So the next function is a function in the express router when invoked executes the middleware, which is uh, succeeding, succeeding the current middleware. So middleware functions can perform the following tasks. Exe uh, it, it can execute code, make changes to the request and response objects. So yeah, um, the next thing that we have to do is actually bind the, the reference for the user. So I'm going to say const user this. And then the next thing that I have to do is actually assign the, the password key in here. And we're binding the whole user user uh, data into this. So I'm going to say 
I'm gonna say user dot password. And I need to make sure that the password is is uh, not empty. So user password that will return true if it's not empty. And the next thing is the the actual hashing. So since I'm invoking a, a sync here, I'm gonna call in a wait. Then the next thing that I have to call in is the bcrypt hash, uh, bcrypt hash. So here, bcrypt hash. So uh, in the bcrypt hash, the first, uh, the first uh, parameter will actually be uh, the the password itself. The next will be the salt rounds, and then after that is the the callback function. It will return either error or or if it's successful then the, the hash value so what uh, what is a salt what what is salt rounds so salt round they actually mean like the cost factor so the cost factor control how much time is needed to calculate a single bcrypt hash so the higher the number here which means um more hashing rounds are executed so you have to make you have to make sure that uh, you have a reasonable amount of of salt rounds because the greater number the greater number you you have for your salt round that means uh, it will also take a longer time to calculate the the hash that means it it can be an issue in your performance but the good side of that is that you will have a very secure hash <laughs> value because you you generated it for a long time the, the salt round is a is a greater number so yeah um let's go back to our code so i'm gonna say bcrypt dot hash then the the first parameter will be the user password so user dot password um th but i'm gonna make sure that my password doesn't have any any white spaces, so I'm gonna invoke here a, a method called trim. Trim, what trim does is just it just removes the the white spaces. Trim JavaScript. Yeah, it will just it will string then the trim method. So that's what I'm doing there. And then the next would be the the salt the salt round. So I'm gonna give it a value of twelve. I think I think that's that's fair enough. Some some people uh, yeah, prefer to use ten for their salt rounds. And then the next uh, the next thing that I will do is invoke next. <laughs> so what happens is before we save our, our our password, I mean our user, it will perform this operation, which is the hashing. And it will invoke the next uh, next uh, middleware in in the execution stack, which is basically the saving of the user data. Okay, um, let's try to see if this works. Uh, I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna restart my app. And I'm gonna insert an, another user here. I'm just gonna put five again, <laughs> and then I'm gonna have the user user password be the same. So I'm gonna send this one, and it says user inserted. Let's see if we see any difference in our user data and our newly created user data. So as you can see here, our password is no longer uh, the password that we put in our request body. It's the hashed thing. So if we try to if we try to view the whole the whole um, the whole object or the whole record, it's this. So it's really so it's it's really encrypted now. So yeah, that's how you that's how you secure your your uh, you try to encrypt your your password using uh, bcrypt using hashing. So um, I hope everything is still clear at, up until this part. If you have questions, then uh, please feel free to comment. So the next thing that we will have to do is work on, we still have one thing for the updated app. So the, for the updated app, we will also use the pre-middleware. So we will perform an update uh, and whenever uh, the up find one and update base model method is executed, then we will perform a pre-middleware function. That means we will uh, update the, the date value for that. 
So, um, this is how I, I did for the user, user password hashing. I'm going to say user schema dot pre. And then the base model method uh, that I want to, to look at into you know, when changing the value of the update, uh, updated at field is the find one and update because in our controller, as you can see here, when we try to update a user, we're actually calling the find one and update from our user service. And from our user service, we are calling the find one and update, which is the model base model method here. And when we try to go to Mongoose uh, documentation and go to the API and this and then the model methods here, we have the the find find one find one and update yeah so uh that's that's the base model method that i want to look into um i'm going back to my user model here and then the the next thing that i have to do is uh, invoke a sync and i'll just have an a function with no uh, no parameter and I will since uh, we already have uh, the 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 binding of the user from here, and this is a uh, a chain. Uh, this is like a this is like a, we're recalling the next. We're actually trying to invoke the next middleware, and so I'm going to put this that update. I'm gonna have an empty object. Then the next uh, thing that I will do is actually set uh, color sign set. Sorry, uh, actually, it's actually not outside. I will set the updated at um, updated at field with the new date. Okay. So this is how we will uh, try we, to... We got a comment from Jeffrey uh, saying mm -hmm. that you can omit the create add and update add by using timestamps. True. MongoDB will generate it for you. Mm, that's, yeah, that you, that's true. You can, uh, you can actually like, um, we, can, we can actually do that as well. So that, that will actually save you time if you, if you do that. So actually, Thank you, time. Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. So time stamps equal to true. Yeah. I think that's what you mean. I guess that's what he meant. Yes, time stamps true. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that's what he meant. Yeah. In mm -hmm. the comment that was okay. uh, that's what that's exactly what was stated. Okay. So uh, I'll just finish the the update, find one and update first. Then um, then after this, uh, let's also try to do this with a with a organization model, so that we will also have a create created and updated at field in there. Yeah, yeah, with a with a version here. Sorry, so timestamp true because this is the setting. This is actually the the model fields here. And this is like the settings for your model. So you're setting the version key to false and then the timestamp to true. So yeah. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> so yeah. And I'll just try to delete this first and then I'll carry on. So I'm going to do the same thing with our, with our organization model here. So as you can see, it doesn't have the version, version key false. So I'm gonna do that also. In here, I'm gonna set so version key false, and then I'm gonna add the same the same uh, fields here.
And then for the organization model, I'm going to do the same. So um, then instead of user schema, I'm going to use the organization schema. Find one and update, and then we have the updated uh, updated add to set a new date. Let's try to save that. And I'll also save this. I'll try to restart my app. And this time, I'm going to uh, perform the, let's, let's try to see if our updated at and created at will be uh, on our organization uh, record. So let's see in our, in our routes here, we have the post organization. So I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to invoke a post. I'm going to say organization. And I'm going to pass a body here of JSON type. And, and let's, let's try to see the, the model, model fields. So in here, so um, I'm going back to my postman. <laughs> and here we are again with the double quotes. Okay, and okay, and then um, I'm going to just put here a random string called ABC, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that for the other for the other values because basically you can you can put any value here because this is of type string. And remove the last comma here. So let's see. As you can see, it says data inserted. Let's see if our ABC uh, ABC organization exists, and we have there the updated, uh, the created at and updated at uh, timestamp. So let's go to the organization, and here we have this. Now let's perform a a, a find one and update. So for the find one and update, I'll go back to my organization route. And I have here the update organization, then the organization ID. So uh, I'm going back to my postman. So first, I have to copy the, the ID for this. Because this is, the, this is the record that I wanted to update. So I'm going to say put here. I'm going to paste the organization ID. Mm. Then slash. And then the body should be of JSON type. And then I'm just going to put a D in everything. So D. So let's see if this uh, if this will uh, change the value of our updated at field. So let's try to send this one. It says data updated, and let's try to see our timestamp. So as you can see here, we have varying uh, date. Uh, date for our created at and our updated at so it varies by two minutes <laughs> so yeah so that's how you you uh, add add created at and updated at fields for our for our model mo uh, for our records so uh the next thing that we have to do is actually define already the relationships for our models so let's go back to our our presentation here. So um, let's go back to our technical specs. 
So the technical specs, uh, we, we actually defined it that uh, we have three user types, right? So the NGO admin is actually uh, the, the one who can edit the, the organization details. And we have a relationship here. That means we have a user of NGO admin type can be an admin of multiple organization. And an organization can have multiple admins. That means uh, we have a M M M to M or, or a many to many uh, relationship for our model. And how, how can we uh, define that? The first thing that we have to do is add additional field in our model, which will uh, hold the, the references. So I'm going back to our user model here. And I'm going to add here another field called organizations. So I'm going to say I'm going to say organi organizations. And uh, my organization will be an array because we will have uh, a user can have can manage many organizations. And my type would be the uh, this organization's uh, field will contain uh, object IDs of users. So I'm going to say mongoose dot schema dot types dot object ID. And then the next thing that I have to define, sorry, uh, I have to wrap this up with a Curly braces. I'll move this up here. Okay. And so um, the next thing that I have to I have to define is what object ID is actually this referring to. So we can we can define that by using a, a property called ref. And here we can uh, reference this to the organization uh, uh, organization model. So remember in our model here, when we try to wrap up our schema to the model, the first, uh, the first uh, parameter here is actually the collection name. The second is the schema that we're wrapping the model into. And then the last thing is the, 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 model, the model name, which is we will use in, in referencing. So we're not going to, to use the big O uh, organization uh, name, but we're going to use this. So, so that's what we actually uh, uh, put in here. And so um, the next thing that we have to do is do the same thing for our um, organization model. So we have to put another field here, which will contain the relationship. I'm just, I was just going to copy this one so that it will be faster. And I'm going to put that here. But instead of organizations, I'm going to be calling it admins. And then instead of organization, I'm going to reference that to our user model. OK. I'm going to save that and make sure that I'm also saving that here. So the next thing that we have to do is actually create a service that will populate uh, this uh, these fields in here. So let me go quickly go through to the populate uh, in Mong mongoose here populate. So uh, when when we're trying to actually reference a model of a field to a certain a cert, uh, we're trying to do the the referencing we can use populate to actually expand uh, those fields because what we're containing in our in our um, admins in an organization's field are actually like object IDs. And we're, if we try to implement the populate in there, we're actually like, like um, we're actually expanding that field to the, the objects that the ID is, is, is assigned to. So, Let's create a service for that. So in our let's let's work on first in our user service. 
So I'm going to create here another um, model model method, and I'm gonna say it find one and and populate. And I'm gonna call it an async function. And the first parameter that I will do uh, that I will accept is a query. And then the next is the field that you actually want to populate. Populate populate field. <laughs> Our function, sorry. Okay, and then I'm gonna say cons. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a variable called user, and I'm gonna say await user dot find one, which will accept the query that we have. The next is the populate uh, populate model method, and it it will accept a parameter of what field we want to populate. So populate field, and um, so here, what 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 does it actually do? Is it it actually it actually returns you the object of the user with the populated organizations organizations uh, array and what i want to just uh, return for this particular service is actually just the organization when i try to give the the user i want to retrieve the organization that it is an administrator to so i'm going to se select that from our user object i'm going to say organizations and i'm going to say user dot organizations and that's that is what i will return organizations and i'm i will go i i will um export this because we will use this uh, in the in the controllers so yeah find one and populate the same thing for our our uh organization service So I will uh, put that also here, but in this case, uh, I will have the organization instead of a user, organization, and I'm going to say, because the model that we have above is organization, I'm going to say organization, the same thing, query and populate field, and then uh, I'm going to return the admins. So I'm gonna say organization organization dot admins and I'm going to return the admins. Okay, and lastly export this one. Yes. So we're done with our service. The next thing that we have to do is uh, call this uh, base model methods in our in our controllers. I make sure that it's really saved. So uh, I'll go to my I'll go I'll work on first with the organization. So I will define here an API function. Uh, I'll need to be very very descriptive with the with a um, with a function name, so I'm gonna say get admins by organization. And so I will have a an async function there, and I will accept two kinds of parameter, which is the request and the response. And I will accept a uh, a parameter in the URL, so that that will be the organization ID because I will include that in the API URL. Catch that, and with with respect to the organization ID, I will return the admins of that specific organization. 
So I'm gonna object this structure. I'm gonna say organization ID. And I'm gonna get that from our request dot params. Okay. The next thing is I'm going to call a try catch for error handling. Try catch. Then error. Okay. So if I will receive an error, I'm just going to log that. We're, we're not going to implement a complex logging, error logging thing here. So I'm going to say error. Okay, let's work on our, our, try, our, our try block. So I will create a, a variable that will contain the admins. Const admins, and then I'm going to invoke a wait, and I will call the organization service. Organization service, which is Let's call our, wait, okay, it's here actually. So uh, organization service dot uh, find one and populate. So we have two parameters, right? Remember our, here, we have two parameters, the query and the populate field. And so in here, our first parameter will be the ID because we will be, we will, we will, that will be the, the, the one that we will find. Uh, so I'm gonna say underscore ID, then organization ID. And then the next parameter is what field will actually populate. And in this case, we're going to populate the admins, admins field. So you may be wondering why is why am I like uh, querying like this? If you can remember, in our uh, in our robot treaty, uh, the ID is actually specified in this way. So so that's why uh, we are we are uh, doing our filter like this. And so the next thing that we will have to do is return a response. So uh, I'm gonna say res dot uh, return return. I'm gonna return first. Return res dot status. Let's give it a HTTP status code of 200. Then the next I will I will send a, a JSON a message. It's an object. And I'm gonna put the message here, okay. And then I'm going to pass in the data. So the data will be the admins. And then the next thing that I have to do is I'm going to export this all the way down. Okay. We are not, we're not actually needing this. I wonder why it went there. Sometimes uh, VS Code will do some weird imports for you. So you have to take note of that. Uh, here we're, yes, I think we're all good in our get admins by organization. We will be calling this in our routes later on uh, as we will create an API URL for, for uh, fetching the, the related, the related uh, fields. And so uh, let's do the same thing for our um, for our user user controller. So let's fetch the organizations related to the the user. So I'm gonna create another API function here again. I'm going to say const get. Get organizations by user. The same thing, async, and then request and response. And then uh, the same thing with I did in the organization controller, I will accept a 
an ID in the URL. So that will be user underscore ID, user underscore ID, and that will be from the request that params. And try catch again. I'm just gonna going to log the error if we have. And then here I'm going to uh, initialize a variable called uh, organizations. And I am going to call the, the user service that we, we created, user service dot find one and populate. So the first parameter for this is actually the, the user ID. And then user ID. The next would be the field that we want to populate, which is the organization's uh, field. Okay. And then the next thing we have to do is uh, return a response. Rest.status 200. That means we're okay. And then the JSON data that we will return. First, I'm going to create a message here. I'm going to say, uh, Okay, <laughs> and then the data will be the organizations that we touched, that we populated. So uh, the next thing is just as what I did with the organization controller, I have to export this to be used in our routes. Okay, all good for that. The next thing is we will work on our routes. So let's go to our routes. First is in the user route. Let's create here router.get because we're we're fetching data. The first thing that we have to do, the, the first thing for the parameter is actually the, the path. So I'm going to say user, then the user ID, user underscore ID. This is how you specify uh a query parameter. Uh, and then organizations. So we are uh, passing a user ID and we're trying to fetch the organizations for that specific uh, user. And then the next thing that we will uh, indicate is the controller API function, which is get organizations by user. Okay, the same thing for the organization's route. Uh, instead of that, I'm going to say organization. Then I'm going to say organization ID. Then admins. And in here, Instead of user controller, organization controller. No, I want the big, the, the capital letter. This, sometimes it really will do automatic imports for you. Organization, I'm just going to type it anyway. There, <laughs> dot uh, get admins by organization. Okay, now we're all done with this. Let's try to to test uh, if this if this works. So first is what I will do is I will insert uh, a I will insert a new user. Oh wait, we have a, we have an error here. It says here mongoose is not defined. Uh, organization uh, where is this organization model? Line 12. Okay. Okay, <laughs> wrong spelling. So uh, the, okay, let's, let's try to test this. I will create a new user and assign 
assign a, another field there that says um, that says uh, organization and the organization ID. And I will update the organization to have that uh, ID of the user. So I'll go to my postman. So I will create a new user. So I'm just going to say here, um, I will just type my name. Just that and then play you at user.com, password three. Yeah, this. And then the last thing that I have to add is the organizations. It's an array and I will just uh, add here I will just uh, put a, re a relationship to this user for the organization for one, uh, one organization first. So let's go back to our robot treaty and let's try to pick an organization here that we will assign to user Cleo. So here I will, I will fetch this uh, ID. And just Okay, so I will I will insert this. Is my app running? Yes, it's running. So I will insert this, and I'll go back to my robotriti and see if I have a new user with with an organization's. Uh, oh, it's zero elements. Let's see if we're able to save. Our models probably were not able to save our our models properly, so that's why it's not reflecting. Oh, sorry. So let's go back to our code. Ah, okay, I know now the error. It's because uh, we're not. We're actually adding a, a new field, but we're not actually adding that to our to our post uh, to our create uh, create create user. So I'll go back to my con user controller, and as you can see here, when I register a user, I actually don't have uh, a a a field for the the what's this organizations. So I'm gonna put here organizations. So yeah, that's why when we're trying to post, it's not reflecting. So I'm going to put this also here. And the same as when we're updating, we have to also add the new field that we put in our model. So I'm going to put here organizations and here. Okay. Now this should work. I'm going to restart my app and I'm going back to my postman. I'm just going to say here play a one and then let's try to, to see back in our robot VT for our user. And as you can see here, organizations and we have the ID. Now um, let's try to edit uh, let's try to update our, our let's try to update our organization and add a user and, and and put a relationship there to the user using the the user ID. So here we have this. I'm just going to to view the document and. No, I'm going. I'm going actually to the organization. So, what's the idea of the organization again that we related? It's B eight B eight seven. Okay. It's this one. So, I'm going to view the document. I'm just going to copy this. Actually, it's the same. So I'm, I will just add here a new, a new, uh, new field that says admins. 
of array type and I will assign the ID of the user here. So what's the ID of that user again? So here, copy value. Okay, and I'll try to, uh, is my app running? Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, I'm going to send this. And let's see if our organization is updated. Oh, okay, <laughs> the same thing. We didn't uh, we didn't update our con uh, our organization controller. So let's add let's add that. Uh, here, when we add organization, we have to add the admins. And also here admins. Also for our update, we need to add the field admins. In there. Okay. Let's try again. So going back to our postman, let's try to send. It says data updated, and I'll try to refresh this. And now uh, we have uh, admins uh, field here with the object ID. Now let's try, let's try to test the route if it if it will give us the populated object. So let's go back to our postman and let's see what was our what's the route again for for our relation. So let's let's fetch first the the organizations per user. So uh, routes. So user, user ID, and organizations. So I'm just going to copy this and get yes. So user, the user ID, then the organizations. And I'm going to, I'm just going to copy the value here because this is the, the user ID. Um, where's my postman here? So I'm going to delete this again here. Okay, let's try to see if this works. Okay, so I'm I'm feeding it with a user ID, and I'm actually getting the organization that it was uh it was related to. The next thing that we have to test is the get by get admins no get uh get or admins by organization so yeah so let's go back to our node uh node app and see the route for that so organization and you're passing an organization id and it will give you the admins okay so i'll create a new tab here and say organization and i'm gonna pass in admins here and for the id i have to to pass it the id of the organization and so back to my postman still same okay let's test this if, if it works and so as you can see here we're passing the organization ID and it gave us the, the, the user that's related to it. So that's how you actually um, try, to, try to expand your, your object to which it's populated to. So um, I hope that was clear enough for you. So uh, Cle I think we Cleo, should- I have a, yes? a, a small question. So you, yes? you created the API for the users. And you add mm -hmm. the organization to that user. You say that user has the right, uh, the privilege to edit mm -hmm. uh, an existing organization. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you also adding to the organization the admin itself. So what is mm -hmm. the point me coming from uh, from a entity relation environment 
where um, the database is being structured slightly differently. Uh, why mm -hmm. do you have to do that process of having a user having the objects of the organization and vice versa? Because uh, we're actually created the, creating the many-to-many -many relationships, so we're trying to make a connection from this model to the other model and vice versa. That's why we, because uh, in, in the way we created the API is that we're actually populating it by field. And so the only way in, in order for us to, to expand that certain field is to add the relationship in, in both of the fields. So yeah. Okay. I hope. Uh, so usually in, in a entity relation database, we will have a relational database, I mean a relational table that will mm -hmm. uh, connect the user to the organization. So here uh, with Node, you really have always to almost always update two objects at the same time. Yeah, for, the impl for this implementation, yeah. For this implementation. So there will be yeah. another way of implementing it. Yeah, uh, if, if you don't want to have a many-to-many -many relationship, you only want to associate, like, for example, uh, the organization can have multiple admins, then that then that could have, like, only, that will only contain the field for the reference. But since we're doing the many-to-many -many here, we're implementing both of the fields at the same time in both of the entities that we have. Understood. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> embedded objects. Yes, we're actually implementing embedded objects here. So by populating, uh, because we had the we had the anchor to that to that specific model due due to the to the object ID, we're actually implementing embedded ob we're, we're embedding the objects, we're populating them so that it generates us a very big object that we can actually we this is actually uh, sometimes it's it's faster because we have everything we need in one in one API request, rather than having multiple queries. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, from from I mean the 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 application standpoint, you can access multiple information from one single object because there is a mm -hmm. relation to another part of the the application, but you already have mm -hmm. access because it's embedded into that specific object. And we're populating it. Yeah. Understood. Okay, yeah. so it's time for a small uh, water break. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we will re return to you guys in five minutes. See you in five minutes, guys. Yay, see you.
All right, guys, we are back online. So I hope you had a good five minutes break. It was short, but technology don't wait. <laughs> okay, Cleo, it's all yours. Okay, so now that we have implemented the relationships, the next thing that we have to do is actually implementing the authentication layer. So we need to implement log in and log out. We want to make we also want to make sure that we will only be uh, showing the data to to authenticated users to protect our data, and that's what we're going to do for the rest of the session. We're going to implement the log the authentication, the login and the log out. We also will uh, create a middleware that will check uh, if if um, if your API request is actually sending a authorization token, that means uh, you're, author you're authorized to actually access the data to protect your API uh, routes. So let's, let's get to it. So we will be implementing the authentication. We will be working on the, we'll be working on the user controller for the login. So I'll be going back here. And let I'll just put this on the most bottom part. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna say cons log in. That's the name of our API function. And I'm going to say async with the same with the same uh, parameters, request and response. And then uh, the first thing that I have to do is uh, wrap this up in a Try catch block for error handling. And I'm going to log the error if I have. And I will work on now on my try catch, uh, try, try block. So I will be receiving two, two data for this, for the login, the email and the password. And I will be receiving that uh, in the request body, just as how we inserted uh, we inserted uh, date, data. So uh, I will say cons and object destructor, uh, email, and password, which will be coming from the request body. OK. So the first thing that I have to do is to actually check if uh, if the, the this certain email exists in my database, if this user exists. So I can do that by saying uh, I'll, by creating a, a variable that will hold our user, and I will find that user. So user service dot find one, and then I will pass in email uh, you may be wondering why I'm not doing something like this uh, email and then then the 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 other the other key value field is because uh, in es6 if your if your uh, request request body field and your model field is the same you can you can just uh, directly call it like this and it will fetch the value for that so Email and then if if user if user does not exist if not user then I will return a response that says 404 invalid email or password so I'm going to explain later why why I'm I'm having that sort of message instead of just invalid email so I'm gonna say 404. Uh, I'm just going to say 400 instead of 404. So let's quickly go to the documentation. What does 400 mean? HTTP status codes. So 400 means bad request. 404 means not found. So I'm just going to return a 400 instead of 404. So here 400, and I'm going to to draw uh, to to construct my JSON uh, response. And I'm going to say a uh, message, I'm not going to return any data, but I'm just going to inform them that we have an invalid uh, email and password. Why am I doing uh, email or password? 
it's it's actually for us to to make it more generic because if we just say invalid email then that would probably give the user or the, the hacker an idea oh uh, it's just the email that's wrong so so i'm saying invalid email or password so yeah so if all else is correct then the next thing that we have to do is to compare the password remember our password is hashed and what is actually passed in our login is the is the password itself as is so we have to compare the 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 normal uh, the, the the type password versus the hashed password and how do we do that we do that by uh, another method in bcrypt it's called compare so let's quickly go to bcrypt and let's try to search their compare so here to check a password so bcrypt.compare the password itself then the hash that we have and then the callback function this compare method will return a true or false it will return true if 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 it is a match then false if not so let's implement that here i will create a variable that will hold the boolean value for the return of the bcrypt compare so i also need to make sure that my user that password uh, is not is not null and uh, i will already uh, do the do the bcrypt compare so await bcrypt dot compare and first is the password here from our request body so password then the next parameter is actually from here from the user that we fetch so that's the hashed password user dot password and we will not uh, have a callback function anymore we're just going to have the the true or false directly uh directly saved in this variable here so the next thing i have to do is to check if it's it's true or false if it's valid or not so if not valid uh then i'm going to return again the same response that i have here in in the email so i'm gonna say 400 in invalid email and password because it's it's not the correct uh it's 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 not a match with the hashed password we have okay if all else is good then this means that uh we are authenticated but then we still need to do one more thing that that thing is uh we have to issue a token so whenever your user tries to log in this means that this user is is a legit user and then that this user can perform request to your certain api urls and in order for you to to actually do transactions with your your api urls you need to have a sort of an id or an or a or, or a pass that means that uh, that would that would uh verify you that you are you are you are an uh, a registered user and that is by tokens so uh, we will be issuing a token once we have for every successful login that we have so in this case we will be using uh the something we call the json web tokens so jwt so json web tokens are like uh are are this are one of the de facto de facto token library uh, token um tool for for a uh, node and express so here uh, we have a payload we'll be accepting a payload and then it will it will generate this uh, token for us we can also decode this token when we try to compare it if it's something that's that's the server generated that will be for the the other part of this uh, session where we try to compare if the token sent by the user is actually a, a, a legit token so now um, we have an npm library act for this. It's called JSON Web Token, and we have to install this npm library for us to use. So here, this this uh this um link here actually will will direct you here. So let's install this uh 
let's install this uh, specific npm library. So I'm going to say npm install JSON web web, JSON web token dash dash save. Okay, that's installed. We have to call that here. Okay, we actually will uh, have an error here because we're calling bcrypt and we're not we're not calling bcrypt here above. <laughs> Let's call that bcrypt uh, is equal to require require uh, bcrypt.js. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is. Um, Call uh, JSON Web Tokens. I'm go going to to store it in a variable called JWT and require the module. So JSON Web Token. Okay. So now what we're what we're going to do is actually generate a token uh, for every for for our successful login. So how will we do that? So uh, let's create a, a variable. We'll call it access underscore token. And we're going to call the, a method in JWT called sign. Let's, let's quickly go back to, to, to the NPM library documentation. And here, as you can see, uh, this is how you, you generate a token. JWT that's sign, the first parameter is the payload. The second parameter is uh, the secret or private key. The secret or private key is used in order for you to decode, uh, for you uh, for generating. This is used also for 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 coming up with the uh, with the token. When you're trying to 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 compare if if the if the token is actually from the server, the secret or private key is also used to decode the certain token. So yeah, um, let's go back to our code. GWT sign. So our payload, I will try to, uh, the first parameter that I will pass for the payload is our actually our user, our user object. I'm going to say user that, that to JSON. And then the next will be our secret key. So I'm just going to make it very simple here, my secret key. So some of you may be saying that, oh, what you're doing is not, not safe because you're you're putting the secret key right right directly into the code. You can actually uh you can actually put this in your environment variables here and say my secret key and call that call that uh in your in the in the in as as parameter instead of directly calling it. So in here uh for for uh, demonstration purposes, I'll just put plainly the, the secret key here and uh i will uh there is another another uh parameter here where you can specify how long will your token be valid so we have options here so uh the third parameter is actually the options or or you can have also the callback so the options here we have expires in so you can specify it by r or by day so in this case, uh, let's just have our, our expires in, uh, give, give our token a validity of one day. And so I'm going to pass here, expires in, and I'm going to say 24R. Uh, it's actually of type string, let's go back. Yeah, of type string. So you have to wrap this, um, with quotes. Okay. So now that we have this uh, token, we will. The next thing that we have to do is return this. So return uh, status two hundred dot JSON, and then our message will be. 
Um, let's say uh, message user authenticated, and we will pass the access token. Okay. So uh, let's try this. This works. Um, the next thing that we have to do is actually create the, the route for this. Uh, so let's just do the log out, the log out uh, first so that we can, we can test both. So for the log out, um, what, what I can envision for the log out, it can be more seen actually in the front end because when you try to, when you try to log out a user, what happens is that it, it would direct you to the login page again. In the server side, what we can do is actually store the tokens that we have for every for every uh, user sign uh, for every successful user authentication, and then for the logout, what we can do is that we can delete this the tokens that that are saved, uh, so that uh, we we will we we will have so that whenever the user will actually try to use this, that particular token for for, transact, for for transacting with other APIs, that would render it as an invalid token because um, it's, it's, it's already not in our, in our database. So yes, uh, let's try to do that. Um, first, let's create a token just for us to do some, to have to do something with our logout. So here, uh, let's store our token. First is we have to create a model for our token. So I'm gonna do this real quick. So uh, I'm going to create a file here. I'm going to name it token that model that the JS. So uh, the same thing. I will just uh, quickly do this. So what happens here is that we have the version key false again. We have an access token of type string. We have created that and updated that. And then we have uh, we have our token here, wrap uh, our token schema wrap for our our model, and then we exported that. The next thing that we have to do is actually create the service. So we will just create the model and the service for storing the token and for deleting the token. We won't be creating a controller for it. So uh, here in the services, uh, let's let's uh, try to create a new file for this. New file and say uh, token .service.js. And the same thing, uh, I will just uh, have few base model methods that I have. Magic. So in here, I'm creating a token that model, and then the same thing. This is just the same thing with the other services that we have. Okay. So now uh, I will call this a uh, token service in our user controller, so that we can save, we can save our uh, the tokens that we generated upon upon login. So let me go back to my user controller, and I'm going to call here the uh, token service token service equal to require services then token service okay so before we actually return the response we will store the token in our uh, we will store the token in our database so here, I will uh, say await token service dot create, and then I will just pass it with the access token. Since our token model only has one field, uh, but these are already automatically created. So um, yes, going back there. Okay. So we're all set for our login. Let's export that login. The next thing that we have to work on is the logout. 
So I will create another function here that says log out. And the same thing, a sync function with request and response. And so in here, um, I will try to, uh, since when we're trying to log out, we will try to pass a authorization header. And we will try to, to search for that particular uh, token in our database and delete that. So uh, try catch block again. I'm going to log it. Error. And then here, uh, I will try to, to get the authorization, uh, the, the token from the authorization header. So cons authorization. So there are actually two ways of passing a token towards a certain API is through through headers with uh with uh let, let me just let me just finish typing okay request headers uh, and then this specific uh px access token or the other way is through request that headers dot authorization so where will we find that authorization header? So here, uh, you can actually specify a header here, say authorization, and then the, the value will be the token. So if, if, um, if, your, if your request header is not using the X access token uh, field, then we can also fetch using the authorization uh, header. So in this case, uh, that's that's what it meant. What what does that's, that's what it meant here? It's either it's fetching from either of this uh either of this uh value uh, fields here. So the next thing that we have to do, most of uh, the the convention of actually passing a token is is like this. So you put their bearer space then the token value. So what we're interested in is just the token value here. So we will do some parsing, uh, parsing of the value passed in our authorization header. That's the next step that we have to do. So I'm going to say token is equal to, I need to make sure that my authorization, authorization uh, variable here is not empty. Uh, and I also need to make sure, and I have to make sure that my authorization it starts with uh, so let's let's quickly uh, search for that starts with JavaScript. So it basically checks the the some some substring in in your in your uh in your value. So in here it says here starts with hello, then then it will. Uh, return true or false if if this particular string uh, will is is having that substring. So in here uh, starts with remember our our postman. The first word there is bearer. So we have to do some validation also here that our our authorization is starting uh, the value of our authorization is starting with bearer. So I'm going to say here bearer. Then the last thing that I have to do is do some slicing, uh, slicing of the of the value of the of the string. So authorization that slice. So what is slice in JavaScript? So slice JavaScript. Let's go for the MD, MDN <laughs> this time, not W three schools. So the first, uh, the first parameter of the of the slice uh, method is actually is is the the, the start. Um, how how many how many characters will you 
from from that point how many characters will you start so in this case um and then the next parameter will be uh the length of of you of the th of, of the of how long you want to you want to actually slice from that from that string so in this case uh let's try to count in our postman so one two three four five six seven so that's seven characters from from the start until the first uh, from the token so that will be our starting point so that will be seven there and when will be our our what will be our our, our like end so when you look at JWT, it's actually a very, very long uh, string here. So what we can do is actually just take the length of the authorization uh, authorization value. So I, I'm going to say authorization dot length. So, that, so that's how we parse our token. So now that we have our parse token, the next thing that we have to do is uh, Try to delete delete uh, our our token. So I'm going to say await token service uh, dot delete one. Do we have a delete one in our in our token service? Yes, we have. Okay, so I'm um, going back to my user controller. Delete one. And then what I will pass is the access token, and then of course the value of the token. You may be wondering uh, why why am I like uh, not 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 having this? It's because um, because the 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 the, the value that the, the the variable that contain that that we have here is not the same with our model value uh, model field in here. We have access token here, and the holder of our parse token is this is this um this variable here. They're not they're not the same. So this so token then token. Okay, so. The next thing that we have to do is actually send a response, return res that status, and and let's say um, 200, and then let's submit a JSON a JSON message, and say message uh, user logged out. Okay, the next thing we have to do is export this here. So we're now done with our login and log out uh, API function. The next thing that we have to do is work on our routes. We got Cleo, <coughs> we got a comment from Jeffrey saying for your um, extracting of the token um, that you mm -hmm. could use um, split string split and you, you select the sprint and then a bracket and the number. Uh, when, mm, you the were, first, uh, when you were when you were using the substring, the the difference is start with with bearer. I'm assuming um, mm -hmm. ens in, ensures that um, you're actually doing a substring of of something that is really the token that you're looking for. Uh, his way is much more uh, simpler because basically uh, this is uh, the the value of the authorization is an uh, entire string. So what he's trying to do is parse it by by a white space here so uh what the value of that the first uh index will be zero which is the bearer and the second one will be the the first index which is the token so yeah you can actually do 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 that so split and then um split by by white space and then you can you can get the 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 first uh, the index one, which is that. So this 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 works also. 
So let's 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 do that. It's, it's much more simpler than what I did with a, with a slice. Two different ways. There is no wrong way, right way. One faster, yeah. one and mm -hmm. the other one using different. <laughs> Good job, guys. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is call this on our routes. So let's let's uh, work on our user route for the login. Actually, so we got say, another question from Rochiel uh, Lavinia saying, is that a mod array? Uh, what do you mean mod array? You mean a method method in the array? Oh, what's, what's mod array? Yeah, we should. Uh, was, uh, um, I don't know. Is that a mod array um, for the split, maybe? Uh, I don't think. Uh, I'm not seeing the, the question. It's on, on <laughs> YouTube, this one, <laughs> coming from oh, YouTube. Okay. That's why it's all spread from everywhere. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. Rochelle, if you can specify a bit more. Mod array, I don't know what it will mean. I think yeah, you are manipulating a string as opposed to an array. However, can oh, you... Can I, you... Think, I think what she means is that when you try to execute the, the, the split, uh, let me go back to the user controller. When we're trying to do the split, it actually creates uh, an array of of what of the broken uh, of the of the array being broken down by white spaces. So here, this is this is the this is the index. This is the of index of the array. Yeah. The, for the zero will be bearer, the bearer and, yes. and the one will be the token itself. Yeah, I think that's what that's what she meant. I think that's what he meant. Yeah, correct. Okay, we're learning from all from each other. Cool. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, please. So, uh, yeah, indicate a white space here. Okay, so the next thing is for the logout in our routes. Do, do we have any more questions? Uh, what is none? None so mm, far. None so far. Okay, I'll proceed with the with the routes. So route that our we will uh, we're actually uh, implementing a whenever we try to log in the 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 method for that is post so post and then the first parameter will be the path so let's say user underscore log uh, slash login why are we using this when we can just like specify slash login because uh we need to because in the front end later on we will have also um a route for slash login so in this case, we're trying to differentiate the API for the back end and, and for the for the routing of the front end for the login. So, th so that there won't be conflict. So here we'll just say user slash login. Okay. So the next thing is we will call the API function from our controller login. And uh, the same thing for our logout. So Route router. This is not route router. Router dot post. Same thing. Uh, I'll just copy this <laughs> and then exchange it for the logout. Okay, so logout and then uh, logout here. Try to save this and test it. So. Um, yes, uh, in my controller, I have to make sure that everything is also safe. Yeah, I don't have any unsaved here. So let's go back to our robot 3 p and um, let's try to pick a user that we will log in. Hmm. Password 123 and, and the, the username is, I think this all have the same password. So, okay, I'm gonna use uh, this this user here, the, the, the most recent one. So, copy value. So let's go back to our Postman. Let's create a new tab here. Let's invoke post. And I'm going to have a, a body. Uh, with the email and the password.
So the password I think is the same. This one, password one, two, three. No, not cut. Copy. And paste, and then of course our URL. And user slash login. Okay, so let me make sure that my app is running. First node app, it's not running, so I will invoke clear npm start. Oh, I have an error. So login of undefined. It's online user route. So let's go to our route. User controller, log in, log out. This is actually not included. That was imported when I, uh, uh, wrong spelling here. So let's. I'm going to save again my user controller and see log in and log out. Yeah. Cannot read log in user controller dot log in. Hmm. I already imported the exported the login that we have here. So I'm wondering what's causing the error here on our route. Ah, okay. So there you go. Okay, now this should work. Okay. So let's try again with this one. Let's try to send. And as you can see here, we were able to have a access token. And let's go back to our to our database here and see if that was saved in our in our collection. So as you can see here, we have a new collection with one record. You can also like uh for for advanced people, you can also um make sure that whenever you try to save the token you will be able to identify that that whose specific user uh, is this token from so the reason why we did uh, we pass the payload um let me go back to my user controller when we generated the the, the token we're actually passing the the user the user object that is helpful when you're trying to identify when you're trying to decode um the the token where it's coming from because we're passing it the payload as the user object so um that's another that's another lesson um but yeah you can also do that um and then uh let's let's test the log out so um in this case i will go back to my postman i'll just copy this And uh, in here, we're, we should pass an authorization header with bearer. And then uh, we will be passing the, the token generated from our successful uh, authentication. OK, so let's try to see. In, invalid uh okay because i'm using login this should be log out okay user log out so what are what 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 does our user log out api function do again it it basically will just uh delete delete the delete the token so let's see if it deleted the token from our from our database so as you can see here we have no more uh tokens stored we just deleted that so yeah, that's for our authentication layer. Uh, we're down to our last uh, last uh, topic for for this uh, for tonight, which is uh, securing your 
your API uh, using tokens. And we will do that by creating a middleware called is authenticated. So uh, the way that we have right now, the, the our our APIs are they, they are they can be accessed um, by anyone because uh, uh, we didn't we didn't identify which which is the user or which is the request coming from. So we have no way of identifying that. And and for us to know uh, and for us to secure our data, we have to put uh, we have to make sure that the people who can or the, the users who can access the data that we have are the users who are registered uh, in our app. So um, let's do that. So the first thing that we have to do is uh, create a folder called utils. So I'm going to create a folder called utils. And uh, Inside utils, I'm going to create a helper helper uh, file. So here I will create helper.js. So what we will store in this helper.js uh, file is a, actually a function that will verify if if our token is 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 something that our server uh, generated. So uh, for us to do that, we need to we need to import our JSON Web Token, JSON Web Token uh, module again. So require JSON Web Token. Okay. So I will create a function that says JWT verify. Verify. Okay, and it will accept a parameter of the token. So I will enclose uh, this, um, I will put this um, function in a promise. So a promise, uh, I, will, I will type first, new promise, uh, then it will have a parameter of resolve and reject. Then uh, arrow function. And then um so in this in here uh, i will explain promise later so i will continue co coding the logic first so uh we also have let's go back to the documentation so i uh, in json web tokens json web token and pm there's a there's a method called verify 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 so here um uh, this will this will uh, the callback uh, will have the with a decoded payload uh, try to identify if the signature is valid if the token is valid so it will pass a true or uh, true or false uh, value so here uh, the first parameter will be the token so this this will be fetched uh, from from our authorization header and then the secret or public key that we we uh we specified when we signed the token it should be the same with the with what we will verify and then uh options and callback so let's go back let's call jwt that verify and then here uh, this is our parameter so this will be uh the first that will pass will be passed to the certain method and then uh what's What's our secret key again? Um, we use it in our user controller. It's called my secret key. So in here, again, you can store this in your environment variable for you to be safe. Um, so, so here uh, I'm going to put the secret key and then the callback function. So I'm going to say error and decoded. So if if error that means um, it's it's not it's not a valid uh, not 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 valid uh, token I'm just going to to call reject and then pass in the error 
the error dot message dot message okay so uh if if all else is good then we have to resolve this and pass decoded okay so a uh, promise is actually an object that may produce a single value at some time in the future so um it's either a resolved value or a reason that it's not resolved so in this case we're passing reject if we're encountering an error uh if 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 an if an error is thrown uh when we try to call this uh verify that error could be uh you know uh the the token is is not valid and we have a resolve here um that will give us the that will give us the result for this uh, method so promises um Promises are just like a way of saying that I need I need to execute th this and wait for this uh, uh, to return a value, and so I hope that's clear. If not, then you can you can look more into into what promises are. So the next thing that I have to do is um, export this because we will use this in our middleware module that exports uh, JWT verify. Okay. Now that we have our verify function, the next thing we have to do is construct our is authenticated middleware. So uh, here we have our helper. I will create another file here and I will call it middleware, middleware.js. Okay, so here we will use the JWT verify function that we had. So I'm going to say, Fonts J uh, v w t verify from our um from our file um from our utils helper from if 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 you will be wondering uh, about this uh vs code will do the magic for you so if you try to do that it will also allow you to do like that helper um so um the, ne the next thing we have to do is construct the middleware is authenticated so i'm going to create a function is authenticated and since this is a middleware it will accept three parameters request response and next um okay and our function so like we did with the uh, logout, we have to do the parsing and we have to we have to fetch the value of the of the authorization header. So since we did that already, the parsing, uh, we can we can just copy that here. And I will uh, put that in our middleware. So there. So the next thing we have to do is make try to try to verify if this token is 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 valid. So if uh, if token exists, uh, we will do something. If not, then uh, if not, then I will just uh, I will return I will return an error that says uh, auth token is not supplied. We have to do the we have to do the error handling first. So I'm going to return a 500. Uh, 500 means internal server error. So uh, and then I'm going to pass a JSON JSON message and I'm going to say host token is not supplied so if if the if the token uh, if i have a token then i will uh, wrap it in a try catch block and i will just log the error
it's really weird sometimes it will uh it will it will um com- do the autocomplete which is not not the correct autocomplete okay uh then um here i have already the error handling uh i will i will work on my my uh try block so here request that decoded is equal to i since this is a, a a sync function i will invoke here a wait and i will call on the jwt ver- uh, verify um method that we created a while ago and uh to- um, pass the token so uh so request uh request uh, decoded is is uh, containing what what's passed by jwt verify so the decoded jwt payload is available on the request via the user property. So this can be configured uh, using the request property option. So, um, and and what we will do is return next. Why are we not returning a response here? It's because uh, this is just, uh, this is a middleware and we will, and we will perform the next uh, the next uh, next uh, middleware in in for in in the execution stack. So we're not returning a response here because this is just checking if, for example, if I want to fetch all the users uh, in my database and I have to secure that API, so I will pass a token. So first, it will check if the token is valid. Then after that, the next the next uh, the next operation is actually returning all the users. So no, you're not returning a response here, but you're calling in the next the, the next uh, function to be executed, which is returning all all of the users. So that's uh, that's the meaning of next in here. Okay. So uh, the last thing that I have to do, not really the last thing, but then for this uh, file is actually export this because we will be calling this in our, our route. So is authenticated. Okay. So um, we will call this in our uh, user. Let's let's just try for our user user route first. Mm, routes user route. So I will call here the is authenticated middleware. I'll say on is authenticated. And then I will require that from the file. Utils uh, middleware. And then let's say that I want to secure this API here. I will move this and put this here below. Actually, there's no point in, in moving that. I, and then after that, uh, I'll call in the is authenticated middleware here. This authenticated. This means that when I call this, uh, it, uh, this, this path here, it will perform the is authenticated middleware, and if all else is good, then it will uh, it will call the API function for that. Let's try let's try uh, let's try this uh, this um, middleware if if our middleware works. So let's make make sure that everything is saved. I don't have an unsaved uh, uh, here, so that means everything is good. Uh, I'll restart my app. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's call in the get all users. It should return an error for us, saying that auth token is not supplied it's users. Yeah. So as you can see here, we have the auth token is not supplied because we're not passing any author. Uh, uh, we're not talking. Okay, we're not passing any token here. So let's use the token. Uh, let's let's log in because we don't have any token. So let's try to log in, and we are we are, we're able to generate a new token. Let's copy this all the way. Is there actually a faster way of copying this? 
it's going to robo treaty <laughs> okay so let's pass an authorization header here authorization and then let's say bearer face and then the token let's try to send that and as you can see here we're able to fetch all of the users that we have let's try to pass an erroneous token here instead of zero i'm gonna make this one here and let's see if uh if if we have an error here okay uh, i think i'm locking one yeah i'm i'm locking one thing <laughs> so it's the invalid token so let me go back to my code in the middleware actually if 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 we have an error i should not uh so here we have the invalid signature but instead of of, of having that invalid signature let's return a response let's 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 further uh, let's let's make this uh, more descriptive so response return uh response that status and let's say 400 and i'm gonna say json and message and say invalid token So let me restart my app and let's go back here. Status is not defined. Okay, <laughs> when it tried, okay. Press dot status. Let's try again. Did it actually say, oh, un one unsaved. <laughs> Again, let's try, let's try it. Okay. Oh, as you can see, we have the invalid token because we passed an erroneous uh, token here. And when we try to revert it, then we have, uh, we were able to fetch the data. So yeah, <laughs> that's how you secure your API and, um, the way for you to secure your API, in this case, we're only applying this to one to one uh, URL. You can actually like like put it here. Yeah, or, or, or another cleaner way of doing this is calling it as a middleware, say app.use, and then is authenticated, and then putting putting all of the all of the let's say Example this this uh this API I want to secure this. So this means that that from this point here, all of the all of this API will be applied with this middleware. So we're using app that use again here because is authenticated is a middleware. Just as how we we use uh uh body parser. So body parser is like a middleware also, how we use the routes. So our routes also are becoming a middleware when we applied it to the instance of express in our server js so yeah that's that's another way of 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 making of calling your your middleware from from uh, calling the middleware you created for is authenticated if you want to do it like this one then you can also do that uh, one by one so yes uh, do i think we finished early 9:30 so <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so, so we, we got a comment from Jeffrey saying that the middleware is like a security guard in an office. If you don't have an ID, mm -hmm. you ca you cannot enter the building. So the middleware acts like a security guard that protects the root. So invalid, well I invalid ID, invalid token, sorry, in uh, fake uh, fake ID. Uh, no mm -hmm. ID, no entry. <laughs> Same result. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a way of uh, protecting your data that only secu uh, only authenticated users with the token generated from the server can actually access uh, and can only perform operations on your on your on on records in your in your database. So yeah, so yeah, very well said. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> so to uh, do you have, yeah, do you, do you have an, uh, yeah good analogy? So one way of of remembering uh 
well is is having good analogy on on certain things. So do you have any questions so far? Thank you also for the suggestions uh, of making things easier, uh, like of 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 better ways to implement. So yeah, much appreciated. Uh, do you have any questions? Do you have uh, any questions? I don't think there is any question in the chat so far. I think. Uh... <laughs> Along the way, we had some, but uh, we answered them all, I think. Uh, yeah. So, um, so uh, I think I think that's for this session. But uh, please uh, stay tuned to us because we will still continue on the next session. This is what we will do on 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 our next session. So we will integrate. Uh, now we are we're having a look. Uh, we're having manual authentication using the login, but Next time we will be implementing uh, authentication using passport. So, and also we will be implementing um, social media authentications using OAuth and also passport with Google and Facebook. So, and we'll also discuss server side data validations because it's also good to validate in the server side and on the on the front end side using form validations for the front end. And uh, we will also be talking about uh, creating a Swagger uh, Swagger file so that you can interact with um, your REST APIs. So Swagger is an alternative for Postman. So as you can see, when we try to test our our, our APIs here, it's like we're we're redefining all, creating a tab and copying the copying the the URL and all that. But then. Uh, also, a good way of testing your API is through Swagger. And what uh, what some people really are waiting for is when we finally create the, the the user interface for this app. So the view layer that will be uh, with React. So we will be using one famous tool called Create React App. So we will be initializing our front end in the next session. And so um, yes. Uh, I think uh, that's for me, but for your homework, uh, I did something on the README here on the Articap NGO. So uh, in order for us to be faster next time, I actually did us uh, um, only for Google. I will still add for the Facebook. So this is like uh, creating your OAuth client in in Google Developers uh, Console. So this is for you to have the client ID and client secret that we will be used when we're doing the social media authentication. So it's a step-by-step -step, uh, guide on also like specifying your, your redirect URIs. So this is this is uh, the, the endpoints that we will be using when we're trying to authenticate already uh, with Google. And I will put put um, later later on today or maybe tomorrow for the for the steps for the Facebook for, for creating a Facebook login and Facebook developers console. So yeah. Uh, I think that's it for you, Batis. Thank you so much for everyone who tuned in. Thank you, Cleo. Uh, I think yeah. that's that's good. You're you're talking about the OAuth because someone was uh, saying. I think Jeffrey was talking about the OAuth, saying that token is uh, used to authenticate user for API based uh, applications, unlike traditional monolith website that uses cookies. GWT mm -hmm. is the most popular. Uh, yep. The most secure way of authentication, uh, authenticating is OAuth 2.0, which is uh, the authentication protocol that Google, Facebook, uh, all these mm -hmm. different uh, uh, connect with uh, Facebook, etc. provides, which is true. So I'm wondering um, if we wanted to include this OAuth 2.0 uh, in the backend application, how will you be able to test it? Because here we were able to test with GWT, JWT, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, looking at the token that was inserted in the database, uh, etc. But with OAuth 2.0, which is uh, using third party, so we'll have to log the callbacks, etc. from the other. So whenever we try mm -hmm. to call the, the, the key, uh, of the Google or the Facebook, whichever, uh, the two, the secret key and the secret, uh, the client ID and the client secret. Um, yeah. We will need to wait for the response and that will be our only way to know if our authentication is fully functional. Actually, we can test it. Like uh, I assigned a route, let's say uh, here, uh, local host 300 Google. If you navigate to that, it will redirect you to the, to the, 
to the option where you have to select which Google account you will you will select. Yep. When you click that, uh, if the user exists, then it will just return the access token. It will also generate the access token. And then if, if the user does not exist, it will perform another operation, which is to save to save the the user from from fetch in uh fetch from the Gmail uh, from from the from the Google API the user data like the email the name and that will be saved also in our database, and yeah we can actually test it on, on the back end. So there so is still we, a way we, of testing it without having yeah. to have actually the front end application being developed. Yeah. yeah. So when you when you try to access this, it will redirect you to the to the Choose choose which which email you want to use. Like you have multiple uh, Gmail accounts or something. So yeah, we can yeah. still test it. Okay, okay, but you will still call it from the browser. So that's why yeah. we are including mm -hmm. that part into the front end development that is coming up mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. So um, when we try when we try to integrate this with the front end, what happens is that we have a button. That we will say uh, log in with Google, and then we have this. Uh, we will be calling this uh, route for that, and then that will redirect you to the Google uh, selection account selection page, and then after that, uh, it after that uh, it will already perform the the operations. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Clear enough. But we can still use the JWT for for e email password, the regular one, without mm -hmm. using. Yeah. Uh, the OAuth provided, I mean, the OAuth protocol, uh, the the connect with Facebook or Google, because some users they still don't like using that one. Mm. But will we be able to to use the OAuth uh, authentication protocol uh, without using Google and Facebook? Yeah, uh, we're actually we will actually modify our user model. We will have a method field there that we will identify if this user is coming from. A local authentication, or if this user is coming from Facebook or Google, and then uh, and then from there we can we will be able to know the users uh, and which which uh, authentication strategy they actually use. So yeah, uh, we will still use the local uh, local way of, of of authentication, which is which is the username and password, and and there and the alternatives for that if the user wants to use the Facebook and the Google, that can also be. Uh, that can also be be accommodated. So yeah. Okay, cool. Very informative. Thank you, Cleo. All right. <laughs> so you. should I take uh, back control over? Yeah. Uh, over the screen Definitely. for a second, and then we wrap it up after. All right. So yeah, I, I think we see my screen. So as you can see, uh, backend development is not an easy task. So we are. <laughs> Uh, now we are fairly knowledgeable about Node.js, so I, I'm I'm hoping that you guys are very close to be experts on Node. <laughs> uh, now that was that was the tip part of the iceberg, but I think uh, what uh, Cleo described was um, really complete. You can really actually get started building an application by yourself on the backend side for now. And based on our technical potential map that you're seeing, next week we are gonna start connecting the backend with the front end. Uh, we have the database with the with the Mongo Atlas. Um, we actually don't really host yet our application on a server. So for now, mm -hmm. no server is involved, only the local machine. So your but we can own. try to host it in Heroku if if this, if they want to see it in live. We can <laughs> so. we can actually start uh, doing that, which is actually mm -hmm. something. Uh, just during our stream, we we got contacted by uh, some of the guys that um, looks for AWS partnerships, and and apparently they like what we do, so we might get um, some credit for AWS. Hey, server instance, yay! <laughs> yes, exactly. With a significant amount of free credit, so which is good. So it means that what we started is something that will, you know, get bigger and bigger. So thank you guys for, you know, being with us. Um, we might not have thousands and thousands of students. The Startek Up Academy is still a, a very tiny, tiny, tiny structure, but like 
you know, we have to get started somewhere. So yeah, thank you, AWS. We'll, we'll follow up on that one and we will respond to, to their email. So hopefully we get, we get fully qualified and, and we get a lot of free credit. So, and we can puck the bear a bit everywhere because AWS, it's not only about purely hosting and just having an EC2 instance that is a tiny fraction of the entire AWS environment. So, so hopefully that credit will help us to, you know, puck a bit Sorry, everywhere, yeah. which is quite <laughs> exciting, right? So, so the DB server backend, and now we are going to move to the front end next week, mm -hmm. um, which is good. As any application, I used to show that Globdrop is being used to develop an application. It's a simple application. You can, as an example, but you can use this, uh, this, this learning to build anything you want. You can build an, another Airbnb. You can build another Yelp. Whatever you want, it's literally the same thing. So next week, we, we are, we are going to be start playing with interfaces, start playing with, you know, all the front-end parts. So like the visible part of what the user sees because the users, they see only a website. And actually the website is really built on top of what already Cleo covered on the course number one and course number two. So next week, interfaces, probably simple for now because it's going to be a lot of login, uh, like, you know, this kind of... Uh, First step, uh, log in, log out, um, retrieve some data, as, as Cleo mentioned. So, yeah, we will share with you guys so you can refer to our GitHub and go back there. Make sure that you, um, you know, you, you have a, a, a peekaboo on, on our, on our, um, on our public uh, GitHub. I would like you to be able to be part of our community on our GitHub. So unfortunately, I need to invite you to be part of our team. So um, I don't think on GitHub you can uh, submit an application. So in that case, go to Discord, create, um, create your account on Discord. You have always the Discord link in our video descriptions. So make sure you add yourself into our group. I created a topic for GitHub profiles. So it would be nice for you guys to put your GitHub uh, username. And so I, we can add you into our GitHub. Um, that would be great. That is one way of doing. But also on Discord, that's where you are going to be. All the great advices that uh, Jeffrey, Rochelle, and many other uh, uh, people gave us, uh, Richmond and um, who else? Uh, I'm not forgetting people that will be mean, but all the people that asked questions and participated and making this course much more complete. Uh, make sure you go there because all your comments were so valid and I think all your comments can be very valuable for everybody that will be, um, that will be, getting their hands on, on what we, we, we thought, uh, on what uh, Cleo described. So go on our Discord and let's make sure that we all share our knowledge. That will be awesome. Uh, also on Facebook, we created the, the group. So the group will have to build. It's going to be just another way also of communicating the different things. So, so Facebook, StarTech Up Academy, it's a private group only for people that are following our stream or anyone else actually, but uh, because we accept pretty much everybody, but that will be supposedly um, geared towards people that will get their hands on, on our code. Um, so Facebook, uh, StarTech Up Academy, um, we will uh, we'll make sure that all the streaming hiccups for next week will be will be corrected. We will be there. Oh, we have uh, another one, a new one on 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 Discord. So thank you. <laughs> You're still here listening. That's great. Appreciated. And um, so yeah, next week same time, same hour. Every Thursday 
7 to 10. We are going to stick to that schedule. We wish we could do it on weekend, but on weekend we sometimes also need to spend time with our friends and families and, and stuff and, and, and disconnect from our keyboards. So no weekend for us. Uh, for now, it's going to be Thursday, 7 to 10 p.m. Next week, same. Uh, hopefully you, you subscribe, React.js. It's a great topic also that we will cover. So same, same, uh, GitHub. There will be there will be all the information we will share with you. Please um, sign up uh, for or register for this event also because that helps us to coordinate about what are the things that you need to prepare um, for having your environment if you want to do live coding on your side also. So it's nice if you sign up on our page. We have your email so we can shoot you all the information that needs to be uh, given to you. Um, so you can already pre-install and, and really do the live coding because that's what should uh, you should be doing. Not only listening to learn, you need to get your hands on it. Um, so that's about it for us, right? Uh, what there is else, uh, Cleo? Am I missing something? Uh, I think that's so far. But uh, you did a really uh over a good overview of, of, of the things that the things that they need to uh, they will expect from starting up academy so yeah ah yes and actually i'm forgetting <laughs> always um the so rochelle was saying the ui ux yes that's that's a cool part of the application not for cleo much she's a back-ender more than a, than a front-ender <laughs> but she's qualified as full stack so so yes ui ux Please, guys, can you also let us know what you would like, what are the topics you would like us to create for you? Um, there is so many things to cover. You know, three hours every week. Will uh, In a few months, you will not become um, the next Googler developer. Maybe in a few months, but not a few weeks at least. So please uh, tell us on Facebook, on YouTube, whatever you want. We, we really look at your comments and we, we really want to create the content that you need. So that you need, that the community will need. So please make sure you let us know. Maybe you want us to tackle a specific topic and that would be great for us to be aware of that. Uh, actually, UI UX is one of the topics that we will have to cover. Also, how you build your own UI UX. You have a lot of tools and uh, you can install certain software on your computer for free and start building your own user interface. It's not, uh, uh, it's not only a de designer's job, it's also a, a software engineer job to be able to understand how we build a UI UX. Uh, maybe it will not be the greatest UI UX in the world, but at least that's a topic we can co cover. Looking forward for Flutter. Mm -hmm. Oh, Flutter. Flutter. <laughs> I'm actually learning Flutter right now, but then no, <laughs> not 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 that confident yet. <laughs> Maybe not you. We 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 have a couple so, of mobile developers that actually yeah. did Flutter internally. Um, mm. eh, it's still yeah, a framework will... that is not yet fully ready. I think. Uh, mm. I mean, it's great. It does a lot of things already, but I think it's a it's a it's uh, the learning curve is quite uh, it's quite stiff it's yeah very stiff very stiff but but yes i mean uh, if we need to produce a couple of uh, stream on flutter i think it will me it will make sense looking forward CICD. for cicd oh continuous yeah. integration and continuous deployment aha <laughs> uh -huh. docker uh -huh. and kubernetes uh <laughs> Oh, Kubernetes and, and which one? Docker. Uh, doc ah, yeah, that's true. Yes, CD. But do we have to use always Docker for CD? Um, not really, but I think uh, that's really the combination for CI CD because, uh, because when you try to set up a server, you always have to do these manual installations like oh, I have to, uh, I have to, to install Nginx, I have to install um, supervisor or pm2 or whatever background process at um a background processing a tool you have the, so but if you have docker then you can you can just uh, have a, a file that will uh, execute all of these things for you so yes it's, mm. it's docker is nice <laughs> also uh 
and paired with Kubernetes. So it's, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so that is probably something we could investigate when we start looking for uh, yeah. AWS. Mm -hmm. When we get the free mm. credit, so AWS, mm. please <laughs> answer my my request soon. Uh, we will need your credit. The free credit will be welcome because we will need a server, right? Uh, but maybe, mm. yeah, we can. Uh, we we could do that with AWS quickly and then CI/CD. I think it will make sense. Um, I'm sure we can we can have a starter kit for CI/CD. Obviously, for very large, very scalable applications, it must be extremely complicated, um, like a Netflix, for example. When these guys they they uh, they roll out stuff, must be uh, must be uh, must be a tough cookie. But uh, but I'm sure. What about learning CI/CD or getting our hands on CI/CD in three hours, Cleo? That's doable. <laughs> no. Now. Uh, I'm not sure because we also have to integrate it with like, you know, um, the deployment. So, for example, you have a staging server, uh, where, where should that be reflected? And when you're pushing to the master, it's auto deploy, auto build and all that stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, you know, no, no, no. starting small, starting small. Ah, okay. We don't need to go uh, the full, the full domino effect. We just have uh, just two domino CI, CD, boom, boom, up deployed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe yeah, no. Think, uh, maybe it's, it's one topic is the CI and the other one mm. will be the CD because we can dissociate both of them, right? Yeah. So I think it should be at least two streams. Piece by piece. Yes. Yeah, because that's the way of understanding mm. how you do mm. software engineering. Uh, mm. It's really to be able to consolidate your each piece first before going too fast before starting uh, trying to run a marathon first you learn how to walk and then a bit how to jog and to learn and after same with the bicycle and same with the with the swimming so it's uh, it's gonna have to be piece by piece but we, we mm. really want how about machine learning ha! that is a few months from now no i mean depends we could do machine learning but yes that's definitely a topic we want to tackle no um, yeah. Which one, which, whichever, I mean, what is a machine learning? I mean, which one we, we can qualify as the first topic in machine learning? Should it be a uh, 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 simple character recognition, probably? Or yeah. Opti OCR, optical character recognition, and probably use it with TensorFlow to, to make uh, it exactly. easy. Exactly. TensorFlow. Uh, <laughs> so that it's simple. simple. TensorFlow is the yeah exactly um, TensorFlow for character recognition. Actually, we we are already uh, having some projects that will be coming our way supposedly to do that. So indeed, we will we will uh, we will share with you guys um, uh, this TensorFlow part. But there is also mm. the NLP, the natural language processing, mm. which is still image somehow processing. machine learning in a certain way. Um, so, and yeah. you have to discuss neural networks. So it's a whole thing. When you do NLP, yeah. that's exactly what you do. You need to start uh, talking. Uh, you start building your neural network. Uh, that's mm. that's a must. So a lot of interesting topic. Really yeah. So let's get things. ready. But next week, <laughs> let's do front end. Front end is going to yeah, be yeah. easier, right? Even yeah. if React Native, React JS is not that easy either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cool. We, we wrote that. Actually, we have all this, this stuff in, in mind. Yeah. The auto face facial recognition. Uh, if we can see okay. if we, if we are happy or sad. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> Awesome. So I think that will do it for, for today. Congratulations, Cleo. Thank you. No, congratulations to everyone who, who you know, uh, uh, learned a lot today. So congratulations to you guys. Well, and learn, but you. make sure you push on your GitHub and make sure that whatever Cleo mm -hmm. has been coding in front of you, you could it on your side also, because there is nothing better than doing it yourself. So I will do that by next week. So I make sure that I can say that I, I did the course number two before tackling the course number three. Yeah. And so uh, you need to build the back end first before uh, because some of you i know are very excited about the front end stuff but then uh it's also good if you build the back end so because you will con con consume our apis and integrate it with our front end so the 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 process really is like building first your apis and then building the the user interface after 
Uh, so yeah, um, even though if you're excited about the front end, then if you want you to come, uh, if you, you're building the front end first, but you don't have actually the back end code, then uh, you won't have any uh, anything to integrate with. So yeah, do this, guys. The the the, the course one and two. So, exactly, yeah. because because I mean, as uh, Rochelle says, uh, the back end mm. is the backbone. Um, we could we could circumvent the backend if we are not using APIs, if we are doing um, some standard, um, mm. I would say PHP or like that you could have on the WordPress website, like a, a content management system like WordPress or Joomla mm. or any other. So you could really mm. get your hands into the front end immediately because that's basically HTML and CSS. But for React.js, HTML, CSS, it's actually not the first thing that you're doing when you're tackling the front-end development with React, Vue, Angular, all that stuff. It's basically consuming the data and how you're, you're you know, calling the data from, from the backend through mm -hmm. API. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need the backend. So now we've got the backend. I mean, as we got the backend, your turn to get the backend. <laughs> get it ready on your computer by next week, so so you can you can build your React JS uh, front end all, all by yourself. PHP backend dev here. Uh, time to switch to JS. Uh, thank you so much for this. Thank you, Richmond. Very helpful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, PHP backend. Yeah. Time to switch to Laravel. GS, but yeah, we we are looking for Laravel developers. So if you <laughs> if you want to join, actually we are looking also for React JS developers. So guys, oh, I, plug. <laughs> yes, it's start take up international. It's not start take up Inc anymore. It's start take up international. <laughs> so PHP, yeah, I wonder uh, what kind of PHP uh, backend. I mean, I'm assuming uh, maybe some some Symfony, maybe some Laravel, some mm. Wii Two, uh, mm. Laravel PHP. Mm. Hey, Richmond, come. Send me a message. I we 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 have some cool projects on Laravel. <laughs> .NET Core oh. Dev. Oh, Carter James. Hey, cool. So which one the .NET Core? Because as it has to be Core two, it has to be cross platform. Because .NET only with Windows. No way. We offer the we pay all these licenses uh, that are unnecessary. Not cross platform. Not cool. .NET Core two only. <laughs> That's the only one that we we've done we've dealt with. Because uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, Microsoft. Should not say that, <laughs> but uh, I prefer open source. I prefer I prefer free. Right, guys? You like free? But you you're on a free online course because it's free. You're there. If it was Microsoft, you will have to pay. You will not be talking to us. <laughs> so go go Linux. <laughs> Yeah, so .NET Core 2 is cool also. We do, we've done some cool projects. Exploring now on Blazor server. Ah, Blazor. Um, which one are the Blazor server? I'm curious about that. You see, that's, that might be your next topic, no? Free meal. Uh, if this is uh, actually an in-person meetup, then they could have done, you know, snacks and pizza. But then, <laughs> but then uh, quarantine happened, so we're bringing our, our like, uh, sessions online so exactly yeah. usually starting <laughs> up I had always the free meal for all our staff every every single day of the week when we did some events on weekends uh, it was free meal also was fully sponsored by us uh, mm. but now I don't think it's a it's a good idea to meet face to face and also <laughs> the why we started starting up Academy is because um, because, you know, everybody, all the schools now are trying to figure out a way of, of uh, going online because that's a safer way to um, now teach to children and to everybody. So for young children might be a challenge, but uh, my, my belief is that if us uh, software engineers who are not able to crack the, the formula to do online class, but interactive, not like Udemy or Coursera, where, where you don't have this interactivity. If we're not us, software engineers, able to crack that formula, I don't know how the DepEd can really crack it easily because, you know, I think software engineers, we have a way of 
assembling thing. We 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 play like Lego uh, or or you know all these 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 puzzles. So we like to do that. And uh, you can deliver snack for us at home. <laughs> we could. <laughs> <laughs> we could but StarTech Up is also pro for good healthy food because our food from our <laughs> chief cook officer was, was always healthy so yes uh, you will have nating, native beans uh, a lot of native beans green beans if you if you if you like it good we can sh we can ship you a kilo <laughs> no stack no no nothing fattening we don't exercise anymore no no coke at home if we don't move if you don't do 10000 steps per day no coke no no chicharron <laughs> very interesting topic keep sharing your knowledge guys yes keep safe too Yes, we will. We will. So thank you to our master Cleo. Thank you to all the team to support us. Thank you for you guys to um, to be um, to be with us. Um, I think it's important the community grows and shares and learns from each other. So so stay tuned. Have a good fun. Do your homework, and see you next week. See you next week, Cleo, or I see you maybe tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is tomorrow. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> All right, see you at work. I mean, at work yeah. online. Bye bye, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.